Here we are at the end of summer 2022, three years removed from the end of Game of Thrones. I have to admit, I did not feel very much hype leading up to the House of the Dragon. My guard was up after what Dave and Dan did to wrap things up with the original show. But let me tell you, my worries quickly vanished as I started watching episode one, The Heirs of the Dragon. The casting, cinematography, the score, and the brutality of this world quickly sucked me back into Westeros. The episode starts off explaining that King Jaehaerys Targaryen had two sons who died and now he needs to name an heir. The incestuous pure Targaryen bloodline provides the king with many heirs, but they are narrowed down to Prince Viserys, not him, and Princess Rhaenys. Viserys is selected and the show flashes forward nine years into the reign of King Viserys, which I presume will be the main timeline of the show. As we heard in Game of Thrones, dragons are common in this Targaryen dynasty, and the show quickly reminds you of this as Princess Rhaenyra soars over King's Landing on the back of Cyrax, her dragon. We see many familiar aspects of life in King's Landing. The small council meeting looks and feels like the early seasons of the show's predecessor. We see a highly entertaining jousting tournament, and in typical Game of Thrones fashion, plots and schemes to manipulate the line of succession to the much sharper Iron Throne. Schemes and plots are the same thing. The tone of this first episode soon shifts to a very serious one when King Viserys is informed that his queen is struggling to birth his supposed new heir. He is tasked with the awful decision of allowing the maester to perform a fatal C-section on his queen in order to save the baby, or risk losing both by allowing her to keep trying to deliver the baby. He reluctantly makes the call to try and save the baby. Tragedy immediately strikes when King Viserys not only loses his queen, but his son and heir quickly after birth. The distraught Viserys is immediately badgered about the line of succession in what appears to be the same day as a funeral of his queen and son. Most of the small council is against Daemon retaining his heir status, writing him off to be too violent and not having the patience for the throne. Viserys hears enough of this and leaves. Shortly after, we see that the Hand of the King, Otto Hightower, informs King Viserys of a report about Daemon Targaryen. Allegedly, Daemon celebrated the death of the king's newborn son since it meant that he remained as the undisputed heir, coining the newborn the heir for a day. This enrages King Viserys, who quickly names his daughter Rhaenyra as a new heir and sends Daemon away from the capital. The episode ends with all of the lords of the Seven Kingdoms recognizing Rhaenyra as the new heir, shout out to House Stark, and Daemon flying into the sky on the back of Caraxes, his own dragon. The show does an excellent job of making you realize that we are in an entirely different era of Westeros. You can tell that the Targaryens rule the roost, and they have been doing so for a long time. And how about that opening prologue? It gave me Lord of the Rings vibes and was very well done. We have always known about the Targaryen dynasty, but it's amazing to actually see it in action. In this current timeline, they are absolutely untouchable by any house that might think to rebel against the crown. There are reports that this show might feature up to 17 different dragons, and if that's true, nobody in the known world stands a chance against the Targaryens. The major players in this episode truly captivated me from start to finish. Daemon Targaryen is basically the embodiment of how I imagined the old school Targaryens would be, and the casting of Matt Smith seems to have been a very solid choice. Rhaenyra is great. They've done a good job of differentiating her from Daenerys, and the connection between her and her uncle Daemon is going to be put to the ultimate test in the coming episodes. King Viserys almost reminds me of King Tommen back in Game of Thrones, and Daemon's description of Viserys seems pretty fitting. You're weak, Viserys. And that council of leeches knows it. They all prey on you for their own ends. Otto Hightower as the Hand of the King is pretty solid. He is like Tywin Lannister before Tywin Lannister, both in demeanor and cunning. He is taking full advantage of the grieving Viserys, and the rivalry between him and Daemon is a good one to keep your eye on. This episode was visually stunning. The wardrobes, armor, dragons, locations, and cinematography were top-notch. This show reportedly already has a budget per episode way higher than Game of Thrones ever did, so we can expect more of this in the future. Overall, this first episode was awesome. I had my doubts, but it was a nice surprise to feel myself getting hooked on drama in Westeros once again. This show has already been renewed for a second season, which I would say is deserved. It's HBO's biggest premiere of all time. With much more to come, I'm so ready to see more of this show. If there's one thing the showrunners wanted to remind us, it's that the Targaryens are in charge, and they are very brutal people. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.